All right, welcome back to Lag Demon Programming. In this series, we're going to work on compiler design. And before we get started, we're going to work on getting set up with an environment. And as I, uh, as I stated uh, <clears throat> in my posting on Quora, uh, it will be using Ubuntu and we'll be using this in a VMware environment. And you can download both uh, right here. Uh, this is uh, releases.ubuntu.com, and I'll be working with version 18.04 here. Uh, and you can download it at this link here, 64-bit uh, PC, or if you look around, if you need the 32-bit version for some reason, uh, you can uh, download that. Um, I'm not going to download it because I already have it. And uh, over here at VMware, you can just download the workstation right here download now and you'll see this is VMware player 15.5.6.exe and install that I already have it installed so I'm not going to install that but we will install uh, Ubuntu into this uh, VMware uh, it's very simple to install just follow the inst typical application installation it's not a big deal to install VMware so I'm not going to download that either um, and that's at uh, vmware.com products workstation player workstation valuation. I'll put both these links in the description of this video. All right. So having done that, uh, what we're going to do then is fire up VMware. And you'll see in here that I already have uh, an instance of Ubuntu, but we're going to install a different one. So what I'm going to do here is click on create new virtual machine at the top. And I already have Ubuntu. Well, this is 16. <laughs> Where's 18? There's 18. I have several versions of Ubuntu for various reasons. Uh, so you'll want to browse to that ISO file that you download that is the uh, disk for the ISO disk for Ubuntu installation uh, here in this installer box on VMware. And you can hit the browse button if you need to to go find it. Mine's right here uh, in my downloads directory. So uh, we'll just click next on that. Uh, we'll want to fill this out. <clears throat> so I'll just put down here, I'm going to call myself Lag Demon. And I'll make a username. And I'll make a password. And that's going <clears> to <throat> allow me to have that username and password in Ubuntu will set you up as a sudoer, uh, which we'll get into. If you're not familiar with Linux, I'll explain what sudo is. We're going to have to use that uh, for a variety of uh, installations. So the virtual machine name here, I'm going to give this as a uh, compiler course. You can call it whatever you want. It's your virtual machine. And I'm going to click next. Uh, yeah location is going to be not on C. I want to browse. Uh, my C drive is not terribly big, but I have big drives specifically for this. And I think I want in my D virtual machines folder. And I'll make a new folder here that I'm going to call compiler course. <coughs> there it is. Select that. Okay. So there it is. It's in D virtual machines. You can put it wherever is appropriate. We will need to allocate a fair amount of space to it for all of our libraries. And I'm going to do is uh, set it. Uh, I have a lot of space over there on D. So I'm going to I'm going to give myself 80 gigabytes of storage. And I'm going to go ahead and select split virtual disk into multiple files. Uh, things seem to uh, work a lot better with the disk uh, with it with it broken across multiple files. So click next. And make sure that all your settings are to your liking. I'm going to customize the hardware a little bit. Click this customization button here. Processors is two is fine, but memory four gigabytes that's not enough. I'm going to uh, set this to uh, 8192, which should be eight. Ah, it moved it. I want eight gigabytes. 8192. There we go. And we'll uh, we'll close that. So I have a fair amount of memory on my machine. If you don't, if you, you only have eight gigabytes or something on your machine, don't worry about it. Set it to the lower value. Ubuntu can run with a fairly low amount of memory, but we're going to be doing some fairly intensive work. So 
you need a fair amount of memory, uh, depending on the tools that you uh, choose to use. So we'll click finish and we'll let it uh, do its job here. What it's going to do is mount up that ISO image as though it were an installer disk. Uh, easy install Ubuntu 64 internet connection is required uh, for Ubuntu 14.04 and higher. Yep. Yeah. Well, we have an internet connection, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. And higher to install OpenVM tools. Ah, yeah. So it's going to install OpenVM tools. If you're not familiar with VMware, uh, the VM tools allow you to transfer stuff and back back and forth between your machine and and make everything work very smoothly with your local machine. So uh, sometimes uh, I've found that I have to go get the the more later versions. Uh, well, actually, that was with an earlier version of Ubuntu. I think it's okay on this one. So. This is just going to ask a few questions, uh, fast and full installation. It's just going to, right now, it's just going to uh, go through. Uh, oh, it's creating my uh, my partition. So, um, and it's copying files. So what I'm going to do is uh, pause the video and uh, I'll... Uh, bring it back up when we have something to interact with with the installation of Ubuntu when it starts asking us questions so I can walk you through that. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, we are back and uh, Ubuntu Linux is installed. That's all there is to it. Um, just let it go through its installation process and it'll be done. I'm going to uh, put this to full screen now. And we see here that we've got my lag daemon login and i'm just going to type my password just the one that i entered into uh the installation process at the beginning in vmware and uh we come up with a desktop and we don't really need this can i close it what's new in ubuntu i don't want to know what's new in ubuntu would you close it for me set up live patch and legal notice next show the first report so you can go through these things if you want uh, to uh, uh, send system info uh, to canonical uh, and I'll go ahead sure why not uh, and you're ready to go open software now okay done all right, that's fairly simple, uh, and you can do whatever you wish with that. Uh, it, it won't affect what we're doing at all. All right, so here we are in Ubuntu Linux. Um, uh, I'll give you an explanation of things in Ubuntu if you're not familiar with it, kind of as we go along. The uh, <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is come down here to where it says Show Applications, this grid of dots in the lower left-hand corner, and I'm going to find myself a terminal. And the very first thing we're going to do is get a better terminal. This isn't bad, uh, but I can't easily like expand the text on this, and it's just a simple terminal. So what do I want to install? Well, I like the terminal terminator, and you don't have to do this. You don't have to install this part. I need to because I think it'll be a better experience for you on the video for me to use this uh, this special terminal. And this will give me an opportunity here to show you sudo, S-U-D-O. Well, that means super user do. And as having just installed this, Ubuntu has given me access to sudo. It lets me act as though I'm root. And <clears throat> apt is a shorthand for aptitude, which is a package manager used by Ubuntu Linux. <clears throat> uh, so we want to sudo apt, which is going to tell it do this as the super user, and we want apt to install, and the program I want to install is Terminator. Just like that, sudo apt install Terminator. And I hit return, it's going to ask me for my password. That's the password of my account to verify that it is in fact me. Ah. Sudo apt update. Why does it lock? Unable to lock administrative directory. Let's do sudo apt update. 
and then I'm going to use the up arrow to go back to this install terminator and it still doesn't want to do it. Another process is using it as something is Ubuntu installing something. <laughs> nice. So I just installed Ubuntu and I'm not sure I've ever tried to do this. Um, unable to lock administrative directory live D package is using it. Okay, well, what I'm going to do, I just installed Ubuntu and it's probably a good idea to restart it anyway. So I'll just restart it and see if that clears that problem. Um, I probably have to go out of full screen mode briefly. So the screen is also managed by the VMware tools. So to get back to where I want to be, I probably have to do this. That'll tell it to switch it to full screen. So let's try this again. Let's uh, find, go up here to the search box, find our terminal, get a terminal. And we'll try sudo apt install terminator. There we go. So it prints out a bunch of stuff and it's telling you uh, what packages will be installed by this, uh, uh, some suggested packages and so forth. And it's asking, do you want to continue? And yes, I want to continue. So I'll type Y. And this should only take uh, a few seconds to install. It's not a huge program. And there, that's done. And now I can type exit and leave that terminal by because now when we go here to our show applications and we type in term, you'll see here we have Terminator. I'm going to click on it and run Terminator. And down here, uh, because I want to keep this available to me, what's this? Updated software has been efficient. So I'll do that later. If you want to go ahead and do this update, it's a good idea to uh, install these updates. But I'm going to not do that for now. I'm going to say remind me later. Um, over here, uh, I'm going to right click on my Terminator icon and go to um, add to favorites. And so it's now on this. If I close this terminal, it's now here on my favorites. And I'm going to move it up here to the top where I can get to it easily. So now I'm just going to click on this. Now here's the reason that I chose to use this. For one thing, I can split this horizontally. And now I have two terminals. Then I can split this one vertically and I have three terminals. I can also expand these up so that you can more easily read what I'm typing. And I'm just using control and my scroll wheel to get bigger text. And that's a, probably a bit big, but this should be good. All right. <clears throat> so there's, uh, there's a variety of programs on here. Uh, I'm going to type GCC minus minus version. And there's no GCC found. So we've got to do sudo, sudo apt install GCC. Uh, but I don't think that's what we want. Yes, it is. And let me make this just a little bit smaller. Oops, wrong way. Come on, smaller. There we go. All right. This won't take too long. So Ubuntu is really nice. It comes up with a lot of good suggestions. Uh, so GCC is our uh, C, C++ compiler. Uh, it has a variety of languages uh, with it as well. Uh, and we probably want to install, and we're going to install some other, uh, uh, some other things here. So let's see if we've got CMake minus minus version and uh, we don't have it. So there's a couple of options. Uh, we can uh, install it with snap or we can install it with apt. I'll do the snap one this time. We can go sudo snap install cmake. Snap is a slightly different uh, product. Well, the version of snap cmake was published using classic confinement. This may perform out. If you understand, repeat minus minus classic snap. I forgot this. Minus minus 
classic. Um, if, you, if you repeat the command, including minus minus classic, install CMake, ah, minus minus classic. There we go. So CMake is our build environment that we're going to use uh, to construct uh, our code. Uh, it's a very powerful system. I'm going to show you all about how to uh, how to make that um, work correctly uh, and do what we want to do. It uh, CMake is a, is basically a way of creating things platform independently, um, <clears throat> very platform independently uh, by finding the uh, packages that it needs and so forth. Uh, it's a very powerful system. We'll go through it. We'll use it in a very simple manner and for, at first, but as we build up our language, we'll probably be adding more and more features to it. So, And I'll show you how all that works. But we, we need to get all of this software installed first. Well, that's installing. I can get down here and check a couple other things. I'm going to go flex minus minus version and there's no flex and I'm going to go bison minus minus version and there's no bison so we'll install those but we've got to let this finish installing first <clears throat> uh, and we're also going to want uh, Visual Studio code so let me uh, go get the information I need to install that let me pull this here I'm gonna go type in Google I'm gonna type in Ubuntu install VS code I really like VS code as an editor in Ubuntu running VS code uh, on Linux we click on that yeah, it's really simple here it's sudo uh, snap install minus minus classic code that's all we have to type so I just wanted to show you how we can find that. Uh, I will uh, run this command when this other one is done, so we'll have a code editor. And uh, so CMake is still working. So what I'm going to do now is pause the video until this CMake uh, install is done, and I'll be right back. Okay, uh, we've finished installing CMake. Now we need to install Visual Studio Code, uh, which is going to be our development environment. So we're going to type in again sudo snap. Oops, not Snape. <laughs> not Professor Snape. It's snap. Uh, install minus minus classic code. Okay, so VS Code is installed. Uh, we can go here and type in code. And there's Visual Studio Code. We'll go ahead and run it. And I want to pin this to my uh, favorites as well. Then we're going to install some additional software. So here it is. I'll just right click on it, add to favorites. And again, I'm going to grab this um, icon and move it up here to the top right below my and where I can get to it. And we'll close that for now. We'll get into Visual Studio Code in the next video. Right now, I want to continue installing some software. Um, we're going to need uh, a Flex and Bison. So let's go sudo apt install flex and say yes. This shouldn't take long. I'm going to go flex minus minus version. And there we go. And now. Uh, <coughs> Did I already do this bison minus minus version? That's not there. So sudo apt install uh, bison plus plus. Yes. <clears throat> and the last thing that I'm going to need, you don't absolutely have to do this if you don't want to, but I need uh, to install. Uh, get because I'm going to be saving <coughs> this stuff into a git repository uh, when we start building up our development environment 
In fact, I'm going to put all these uh, various tool installation instructions in the readme.md file on the Git repository, and you can look them up there. So we, uh, we have pretty much a complete environment now. I'm going to fire up Visual Studio Code uh, just to make sure some things are installed in here. Uh, actually, we can do some, uh, uh, do some things. We can uh, click on this icon here that says extensions, and there's tons and tons of extensions you can install into Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> and so the first one that I want to look up here is CMake. And we want to uh, install this CMake language support. There's, there's lots of them. Uh, there's CMake tools. Uh, we can click on these and see what they're all about, see what they're uh, rating is this one's got a uh, a five star rating uh and it and it does some uh, real nice syntax highlighting i'm going to install that one it only takes a few seconds and it's installed and <clears throat> now i want to type in uh flex and bison here flex bison there's uh, Lex Flex Yak Bison. Uh, this is probably a pretty good one. It's only three stars. Uh, bison has no stars. I don't want angular snippets. I believe this is the one I normally install. Yeah, Lex Flex Yak Bison install. <clears throat> this gives nice synhex highlighting and stuff for our uh, flex and bison files which we'll be getting into uh, in the next uh, uh, one in the next video <clears throat> and then uh, I want to type in C++ uh, IntelliSense debug uh, and so forth uh, this one's rated pretty highly C++ IntelliSense not so much yeah I think this top one up here is the one we want so we'll install that for our C, C++ stuff that we're going to be doing. And uh, that's pretty much uh, all you need to be sure you have installed in Visual Studio Code. We are at 23 minutes on this video right now, so that's pretty good. Um, we got our environment all set up. Uh, in the next video, uh, we will make sure that uh, we can compile and we'll, uh, we'll put together a very simple CMake and uh and we'll start putting together some code for this uh later on there are some things in doing c++ code that i like to do that are in the boost library and we may install the boost library uh, uh we'll see but i'll hold off on installing that library until uh, we come to a situation where we may need something from boost and the the main thing that i really like i'll just tell you right now is the uh, command line parameter parser uh, that is in uh, that is in the boost library uh, it, it's uh, it's really slick it's really easy to use and set up and it and it does all of the kind of canonical um, command line stuff that you see the the dash dash names and the dash individual characters uh, uh, and parameters and information that you extract off of that so uh, we may use the Boost library for that, but that'll be down the road uh, probably when we start needing to send in command line parameters to our compiler. So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, in the next video, we will definitely start uh, doing some coding. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications, hit that notify button. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.